We just finished editing this video here and it's 9 p.m. at night and I couldn't believe it. I finished like actually making this video like 7 p.m. And this is probably the fastest I've edited, ever edited a video in a long time, especially to get thumbnail chapters and all that stuff done to YouTube. And then I got offered this right here from someone I know. They said they've just done a new build. They want me to go pick up their 5800 X3D system. And then they're telling me they're having problems with their new system and they reckon it's faulty RAM. And I'm just like, what I'm gonna do is, I literally just talked about this in the vlog we just made. I think he could have bent motherboard pins. So what I'm gonna do is bring over some DDR5 memory for him. I'm gonna bring over my trusty toothpick and we are gonna see if his motherboard's the problem. And also we are going to uh, just go get this 5800 X3D kit that's going to be a deal. Apparently it's the CPU, a motherboard, and 64 gigabytes of RAM for 400 Aussie dollars. So can't really say no to that. That looks like a bargain, but I also said if I end up fixing his problem for me, he can do me a discount. So let's go hit the road at 9.30 at night, go check out this deal, see if we can fix up a PC, and also talk about the Ryzen 7 5800 X3D. Right after today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Sailey and their eSIM app. This app has personally changed the way I travel and get my mobile phone connected to a local network. And instead of dealing with overpriced roaming charges or hunting down a local SIM card at the airport, I just open the Sailey app, purchase an eSIM in seconds. I'm then online as soon as I land. This gives me access to affordable high-speed data in over 150 countries with no hidden fees. For instance, I recently went to Computex in Taiwan and I just absolutely had to be connected to the internet with my mobile phone, whether I'm uploading content on the go or staying in touch with my family, for instance, this made it so it was fast, reliable, and super convenient. Though the best thing yet is that you get a 15% exclusive discount if you're a Tech Yes citizen using the link in the description below and the promo code that I'll put up on the screen and also in the description below. Anyhow, let's get back to the video. And you got 64 gigabytes of DDR4. Yep, G Skill Trident Z. And Neos. a nice motherboard there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> cool, man. All right, I'll, I'll do that. So they're your brother's sticks? Yeah, or? They, those ones are now my brother's sticks. Oh, okay, so they work. Yeah. And then those don't boot. Yeah. Okay. I get but is that a 32 gig kit? Yeah, two six of 16. Okay, and then the 224s don't work. Yeah, like so it. that's just what it does. It just sits there on that light with one stick in. <laughs> like they're All a right. nice looking stick, but... That's, a, that's just a compatibility thing, yeah. I don't know, it shouldn't have an issue, like... And you tried the other stick as well? Just... Yep. Okay. Well, you sent your first rodeo then. So that ended up being a legit RAM compatibility issue. So now it's the next morning and we've got these parts here on the table and I've decided I'm gonna be testing things a little bit different here today. And that's because really with the 5800X3D and even now the 5700X3, I don't really see them on sale anymore. For instance, the 5700X3D used to be a lot cheaper than it is on AliExpress now. And if I look at the 5800X3D, that thing is just insanely expensive to the point where you, I would not recommend buying these things brand new off the, at least AliExpress where I used to get them from. So the prices have gone up heaps. And really the only way I come into this is via the used market like we saw here, where I'm getting a whole uh, motherboard memory and CPU. So basically I'm gonna be testing this today with pretty good memory. And this is gonna be some G-Skill CL16 3600. But at the same time, I'm also gonna remove two of the sticks and the reason for this is because i believe these are dual rank and so if you've got four dual rank sticks together you're gonna have a tough time locking in the xmp profiles and so two sticks at least with this ram should perform better than having four sticks and we've still got 32 gigabytes of ram there which should be fine then we're going to move on to the ryzen 7 7700 this cpu is pretty much at least in the last year has always been a really good price on places like aliexpress and then I've just coupled in with a brand new budget B650, and I'm actually gonna use some budget DDR5 memory, which I'm coming into for really good prices lately. Even though it's only 4,800 megahertz memory, I'm gonna try and tune it to 5,600 megahertz. 
But also for the cooler, we're gonna be using a budget ICE 400 SE, extremely cheap on the marketplace. And it should do a fine job of cooling these things without any overclocking. But we'll also throw in some other CPUs in the uh, benchmarks here, like the 3700X and the 5700X. So let's get on to testing these out and seeing how they perform. So fast forward now a few days and we've got these four different CPUs tested across five different games at three different resolutions. So let's get straight into the results because there's actually a lot to unpack here. We'll start off with the first game here, Marvel Rivals, where they've actually introduced this new benchmark that's extremely impressive because it's just the whole benchmark, just crazy battles. And here's where at 1080p, we actually get a big victory for the Ryzen 7 5800X3D above everything else, but also the Ryzen 7 7700 is pretty close behind there. Even though it's a 20% lead to the 5800X3D, you will see in a few of the other titles, it does trade blows and it can reverse to 20% in favor of the Ryzen 7 7700. But this game in particular, being a popular online multiplayer game, was good to see that the 5800X3D still has some jazz. But then we move up to 1440p and 4K, we can start to see that the other AM4 variants, as well as the 7700, the gaps really close a lot here, especially when we move up to 4K high settings with no upscaling. We can just see that there's practically no difference between these four different CPUs. They're going across now to Counter-Strike 2. Here is where the Ryzen 7 7700 does score a victory at 1080p average FPS, but then it does lose with the 0.1% lows ever so slightly to the 5800X3D. But for whatever it's worth, just we have to look at the average FPS here at 1080p low settings, around 600 for both these CPUs. And then even then the Ryzen 7 3700X getting over 300 FPS, you're gonna have a very comfortable experience playing CS2 on any of these four CPUs, but then going up to 1440p, and especially 4K, when we start to raise the graphical intensity here, the difference does close off a lot, especially compared to 1080p. The onto the next title, this is Black Ops 6, and here's where it does swing back in favor for the 5800X3D, scoring roughly a 10% victory at 1080p low settings. Though then when we step it up to 1440p and subsequently 4K, the gap starts to close a lot to the point where at 4K, we can start to see that there is really, again, not much of a difference even with the old but gold Ryzen 7 3700X. This CPU actually, when I was doing the test, I do have to interlude here and just say, this old CPU was actually still very impressive, especially if you want to get a decent 4K gaming experience and that's all you've got and you just want to say, put all your money in towards a GPU and you know you're gonna be playing at 4K. This CPU might not be a bad option if you've still got it in your rig. The next title we're pulling up here is where the Ryzen 7 7700 scored its biggest victory yet. And this is with Rift Breaker, which does have a very intense CPU benchmark. And here's where at 1080p, I decided to leave it on the max graphical settings still, but do the CPU benchmark. And here's where the 7700 pulled out ahead by about 20% over the 5800X3D. And so the AM5 value champion was pulling ahead of the AM4 performance champion, and it was to the tune of roughly 20%. So here's where I'm gonna say before you freak out with these next graphs, that was a CPU benchmark for the 1080p results. And Rift Breaker essentially has a CPU benchmark as well as a GPU benchmark. And now here's where we're gonna change with 1440p to the GPU benchmark. And so it's not really that stressful on the CPU. So the FPS at 1440p is actually going to be higher than the 1080p numbers. I know some people might look at these graphs and then look at the numbers and go, that's crazy, that can't be. But it's actually because it's two different benchmarks in the same game. And so here's where at 1440p, the gap between all these CPUs closes off a huge amount to the point where they're very close together. But then if we go to 4K, that gap closes even more to the point where they're virtually the same CPU for these benchmarks. The one thing that is worth pointing out here for Rift Breaker is the 0.1% lows are different even on the GPU benchmarks to the point where the more expensive CPUs do perform better. So the final title we're going over here is Cyberpunk 2077. And here's where at 1080p, the 5800X3D then gets back the crown, scoring a 10% victory over that of the Ryzen 7 7700. And then when we go up to 1440p and also 4K, I've got to say, especially for 1440p, the Ryzen 7 5700X as well as the 3700X did do very impressive here. I mean, especially for a CPU that was released over six years ago now, it's definitely doing a very good job handling the RX 9070 XT. 
considering that the AM4 CPUs also only support PCIe Gen 4 as opposed to the Ryzen 7 7700 supporting Gen 5. So there is that little difference there too. But I think a lot of even budget motherboards on B650, even though they say they don't support PCIe Gen 5, I think a lot of people are starting to find out, myself included, that they actually do support Gen 5 if you buy the right B650. And so what I'm trying to say is I'm not gonna nerf the 7700 any more than I already have because I already gave it a RAM nerf for these benchmarks. Though the final benchmark that we are pulling up here today is the power consumption numbers. And here's where I actually found during Cyberpunk 2077 on 1080p low, this was hammering all these CPUs quite hard to the point where we saw the numbers were all very similar across the board here. The Ryzen 7 5700X actually scoring out the lowest absolute value there probably because it's more closer to an efficiency sweet spot than the other three CPUs. But all these CPUs did really well considering we were just using a budget $10 air cooler across the board here. So I was actually really impressed with the results, but do keep in mind, it is winter where I'm at at the moment. So if it's going to summer, especially on the Ryzen 7 7700 and the 5800X 3D, I definitely think about giving them a bigger air cooler, something like a Thermal Ride or a Deep Cool AG400 or a Snowman or a water cooler as opposed to a $10 cooler. Basically during winter, it's fine, but if we got into summer, it could cause stuttering, especially if there was thermal throttling. Anyhow, with all those numbers out of the way, I do have to talk about now value of these CPUs. With the Ryzen 7 3700X and the 5700X, I'm actually gonna talk about them a little bit more right now because they can still be had on places like AliExpress for really good prices. And they're still just extremely good budget CPUs, especially if you come in to a cheap AM4 motherboard and you come into say maybe a Ryzen 5 3600 combo and you want to upgrade the CPU, you can then get a 5700X for pretty cheap off AliExpress still without having to upgrade your RAM or your motherboard and it will do a pretty good job. In the case of the 5800X 3D, it's one of those things where I'm personally only finding these CPUs now on local deals, whether it's a 5700X 3D or the 5800X 3D, which kind of sucks because it's a really good CPU. It's trading blows with the 7700, even though we gave it better RAM, but it's still an amazing CPU for handling the RX 9070 XT, which is pretty much AMD's best GPU out there at the moment. And to be honest, I don't recommend people go out and spend any more on a GPU because then it just gets exorbitantly expensive just to play games on PC. However, the biggest problem with these AM4 X3D chips at the moment is that the prices absolutely suck. Whether I wanna buy one new locally or buy one on AliExpress, they're going in excess of over double the price of a 7700 on an outdated platform. Though the saddest factor of surrounding all this was about over a year ago, I believe the 5700 X3D, you could have them for under 200 Australian dollars, around 130 USD, making them just pretty good value, especially if you were doing PC flip and people wanted to get an X3D chip, that was just a go-to. But unfortunately those days now just seem like a memory where the new meta is still the Ryzen 7 7700. The prices are good on AliExpress, really good to the point where I don't really, around this price point, see any other CPU being that viable. Perhaps Intel's new CPUs and also some of their 12th gen CPUs are coming on sale here and there, but that depends on where you live. But for a blanket recommendation worldwide, the Ryzen 7 7700 is really hard to pass up. And in fact, look at today's results. We just put it with some cheapest DDR5 memory we could find. And then although we tuned it to 5600 megahertz, and also on that note, if you guys want to uh, tune your 4800 megahertz memory, or that's the cheapest stuff you can get by a long shot compared to more expensive memory, then just copy the settings on the screen here, tune your 4800 to 5600, call it a day because a lot of uh, places and retailers essentially charge you this premium for locking in these settings that takes you a couple of seconds in the BIOS to do. Though with the Ryzen 7 7700, one thing I am doing with it at the moment is I am buying them on AliExpress when they do come down in price. And then I am coupling them in with just cheap B650 motherboards because that combo is just extremely inexpensive. I can get Ryzen 7 7700 up and going with the bare bones kit for like just around 400 Australian dollars. And then you add a GPU, a case, power supply SSD, and you've got yourself a banger system for under a thousand bucks. They're going back to AM4, I'm finding DDR4 prices are actually starting to increase on, especially on the new side of things. 
And so DDR5 prices coming down makes it so that AM4 is more of a focus for me when I'm looking at used parts and I'm looking at getting combos. And so I find, as we said before, when I'm getting these combos, they usually come with the better memory, hence why I did give AM4 an advantage here today, even though I'm recommending AM5 over AM4. I gave AM4 the best chance it had, at least on the memory side, with that G-Skill memory that we came into with the combo. So if you guys wanna go out and spend a bit more on DDR5 memory, then definitely the performance favor will then go more to the Ryzen 7 7700 than the 5800X 3D. Anyhow guys, with all that aside, hope you enjoyed today's video. I know some people were asking, can I test the Ryzen 7 3700X, the 5700X, and also got requests for the 5800X 3D. And I thought, well, why not just mash it all into one video? Hopefully that will give a lot of people some good buying advice and always when it comes to these CPUs, just look at how much the whole package is going to cost or if it's just an upgrade, look at how much the CPU costs where you are locally. And if you wanna compare it against a 7800X3D or 9800X3D, then I've already done videos in the past comparing the 7700 to these two CPUs. And I'll put the link up here somewhere so you can check that out and then you can gauge the performance even versus these older CPUs. Anyway, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.